We're on, we're what, on is now? The, what is the fucking fibrillation that you were just talking about? I don't know. I have a cocktail. I'm enjoying myself. So I have this atrial fibrillation shit, uh, and it's not that big a deal. Once a month, my heart, it used to be about once a month, my heart just starts fucking racing. It goes like 90, it goes, da 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 The first time I knew I had it, I walked in, and, uh, and they put me on this machine with your heart rate, and everybody's heart goes beep, beep, beep. Mine's like beep, 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 beep. Did they give you a 24-hour monitor to put on too? I tried that, and uh, luckily for me, I haven't had been an AFib since July, so it's it's pretty simple. But it, it kills me because I can't drink much anymore now. So are you dying? If I'm too tired, are you dying or are you good? Oh no, this is nothing. Okay, this is a nothing. It's just a nothing burger, except if you're an AFib, then you have a higher chance of some stuff happening. But I haven't been since July. It's not that big a deal to me, but because of that, it, it reinforces one of my favorite habits in my life. I sleep in every single day how late uh lately it's been about 2 p.m but your your schedule hasn't changed because it, like obviously when you play poker and we'll get into poker but i'm saying you when you play that your clocks are always off because you have a cutoff time where you go and you, you play because different clocks, cash games clocks tournaments, clocks are balancing uh, your clocks are off man clocks are, and when you're a poker player you don't know what day it is half the time you're trying to impress me with your 2 p.m sleep pattern. i'm like no your clocks are off because of what you do <laughs> and what you choose to do it's listen my wife and I have been happily married. She's over in the hotel right behind us, the Aria Hotel. I love the Aria. Hello. I fucking Hello. love the Aria. I fucking love <laughs> I it. I just ran into an NBA coach in there. Who's that? And uh, should I say? I guess I could say. I mean, it doesn't. I, I, you know what I always do if I'm not you know, involved? I'm not going to say. I'm just going to say that I said, uh, he said hello to me, and I said, hey, I'm looking forward to good things for you. It makes sense. It's Sunday today, and the playoffs, I see his team doesn't play till Wednesday. So he probably gave his guys now a couple days off. Now you're hinting out, though. You're giving us a little too much information. Yeah, he's in the playoffs. Yeah. And so Maybe I said, I'm hoping for great guys. things for you. And You uh, know what's funny is, like, I've, I, I, like I told Phil when he walked in here, and Phil and I, this, this happened very just spontaneous out of the blue. Yeah. You know, we ran into each other in the lobby of what, Aria? Yeah, I ran up to you. I was like, "Bro, fuck, man!" I'm like, "I'm a huge ass fan of you." He's like, "You were, you were like, you know, kind of like my name and all that stuff." And you said I'm Bob Mattery, and I'm like, "Yep, I know that name." You knew the name, <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, I've been a huge, huge fan because I was very, very heavily involved back in the day in the online poker days when Poker Stars was first. Then Full Tilt, I mean, Ultimate Bet was your thing. Yeah, I know that UB was your thing, um, and fucking how great you look at the sport of poker how much bigger it should be than it is right now is fascinating to me. Bro, it's taken off, though. I, I, I just can't even explain. Like, I try to tell my wife, what is happening? Uh, like, uh, the World Series of Poker, first day this year, and I'm not, this is not an exaggeration, 28 people came up to me I didn't know, and they said, I love you, Phil. Phil, there's more than... Bro, what are you no, doing? No, but I'm just saying. Phil, there's a lot like, more. I think you, I think you need okay, to. Okay, let me finish, I, you, Listen, let me Phil, finish. I have the best poker Logo, player in the finish, world. I only finish. bring in the best people in the world. I have here. my headphones on. I'm walking 90 miles an hour. 28 people stop me to say, I love you, Phil. And so let me finish. So then it's mind-blowing to you. This mind-blowing stuff happens. You know what it's like. You, as you become a celebrity, weird things happen. It's a little, a lot of it's mind-blowing. You're just a robot. People come up to you and say the same thing every time. Well, it's, it's not, it's just mind-blowing, like, how do they know me? And then some guy was crying two nights ago. Uh, How do I, they know you? Why do they know Phil Hubbins? I played Why poker. Why does the public know? I played know? poker with Ted Cruz on Saturday night. Uh, sat next to each other for seven, eight hours. Uh, you know, but I'm also, I also hang out with, uh, I, I was with Dean Phillips at a dinner. We mm -hmm. spent the night together. So I'm not really, I walk in the middle politically, but after I left that, I was walking back. You're going and right? Somebody's just going crazy. You're going right? Where? When it comes to politics, you go around. Oh, I've been in the middle. I, I was started on the left. I've definitely shifted more towards the you right. Started on the left. <laughs> started yeah. on the left. Uh, Madison, Wisconsin, man. Is Biden going to run again? And then, but I'm I'm kind of in the middle. I'm I've been red pilled. I've been red pilled. Yeah, I mean, I think it's about time. I mean, the guy. If Biden runs again, I don't know politics at all. But if I think if Joe Biden runs again, I mean, how, who the fuck is going to vote for that guy? As far as just not only based on what he's you know done, but also how old he is. You know what they told Picture me? Picture another fucking six years. What is it, five, six years of that? The guy will not be alive, right? Not to be disrespectful to the president, because I always respect our president, whether what party you fall under, you always got to respect the commander in chief. Right. But at the end it's, of the day, it's like, weird. Like, I will golf with, uh, like, if Trump, if, if, if uh, I'm supposed to go golfing with Trump, they invited me to golf with them, oh, I'm going to go. You gotta uh, go. If, if, if Obama invites me to golf, I'm going to go. You know um, I've met almost U.S. every U.S. president just randomly. It's weird how it happens. Uh, the poker poker really connects to a lot of cool spots. Why do you think that is? 
You think is a lot of guys have a little degen bone in them? I think that a lot of the most successful people in the world like the challenge of poker. Why? Because they love action. They love action. They love to manage situations. You know, uh, they love to manage people, which you see across you at the poker table, um, managing their business, so to speak, the cards they have, mm-hmm. managing the night they're having, managing, and then you know, then it gets to very you know complex, right? Like, like, like everyone knows I have a hand, every hand, all day long. So now, all right, now you might as well bluff seven or eight times, you know. How many poker players fill real quicker in, you think, in the world today? How many? Mil- hundreds of millions. How millions, right? Millions? Uh, yeah, hundreds. Well, we had 10 million come in in like oh, oh, where does, five where or does six. Phil oh, Youth, where does Phil Helmuth rank in the top? All the poker players you put across, you not everywhere. Where do you rank? Well, I mean. Cash I, game tournament mode. They're trying to give me. I mean, I think people are finally saying Phil is the greatest of <laughs> poker player of all time in tournaments. Right. So they finally said that for me. Right. So, I mean, the world thinks I'm the greatest. I'll agree with the that. world thinks I'm the greatest anyway. And if you look the last three years at the World Series of Poker, I've had argue there's two or three guys. I'm amongst them that have had the best record. I made seven final tables in 2021 at the World Series. No one's ever done that in seven different games. Seven. What makes so you I'm so, so good? proud of that. Uh, I studied all these games and I have access to the best of the best. So. If it comes to like we're playing a game called called low ball draw where you where you're drawing cards and it's a low, and I the the best low ball draw player in the world I know who he is and I'll answer my questions and I'll answer his questions about no limit but he won't answer anybody else's questions he doesn't want to educate a lot of people and he knows I won't be spreading around too much so so having access to the best players in the world and figuring out all these subtle little things so I think right now when it comes to being the best. I feel like I'm the best all-around poker tournament player in the world. I'd like to say cash games, but I haven't proven it. I won 30 times in a row playing these mixed cash games. Problem is, you got to be backed in cash games too, right? Like with those cash games, you backed. Like people have to be backed. Everybody no, has- uh, some yeah, I, I, you know what? A lot of people do get backed in tournaments and cash games. That's what sometimes pisses me off. These fucking kids, you know, they're being staked and they're trading, you know, five percent with eight people. And yeah. they only have like 20% of themselves in a tournament. And they're like, oh, I'm, why isn't Phil playing this? Motherfucker, you put 10,000 up for this tournament. It's 100K buy-in. Why am I playing it? Because I don't want to fly across the fucking sea for it. Right. You know, and so I, I, this might sound weird to you. I advised 26 companies. And somebody was like, oh, I don't believe you. Come on, it's easy. I, I post them all the time. But, but that means, and he's like, and I explained it to him, that means I'll give each company 10 hours a year, one hour a month, but not during the World Series. And what does an advisor mean? It's basically I raise money for them. Right after this, I'm going to go meet, like somebody really wanted to meet me as an advisor. I'm going to go meet with somebody right after our interview. I don't know what it'll lead to, but I just keep so Love so that, that so uh, so it's all but it's companies all over the world and then some of them hit one of them's exactly. probably one of them's worth 10 billion and and I have a point that's 100 million you take on two, 10 companies you hit one or two it's a fucking home run right right and this one again it's like worth 10 billion i have a point that's 100 million now you know it's fluctuating yeah. it went all the way down and so and so people are like why aren't you playing a tournament overseas uh let me see i could stay home uh advise a company Mm-hmm. have them give me two points as an advisor and have a chance to make, like, I think I'm going to be a billionaire by the time I'm 76 I, I, years I, old. I, I, and I'm I, not trying to be. Yeah. But so what am I going to do? Do I want to go play these Triton tournaments over in Korea where I fly over there? It takes me two or three days. Do they, do they pay you? Does the country, I mean, I don't know, the tourism group over there pay you at all to come there? Yeah, and they'll pay me. I'll get, awareness. I'll, I'll get paid almost everything. They should be comping your buy-ins. Well, if they came and they said, uh, if they came to me and they said, hey, Phil, we'll comp uh Three hundred thousand dollars worth of buy-ins. Yeah, then you would fucking fuck it. Probably, I'd go. Why the fuck wouldn't you go? Yeah, well, because I yeah, the reason to go is to shut these fucking players up. So the young kids piss you off because I guess because I, I get at, along with ninety nine percent of the young kids. Yeah, but you get you get a poker. little heat at the table. Oh yeah, I mean I'm the poker brat, man. I know you are, and I is that more of a character or does that come naturally out of just pure instinct, or have you been, is that character something that's been is that really you getting fucking pissed? Today, I talked to the CEO of, of this company, right? Yeah. Karate Combat. We'll get to that in a minute. Yes. And And uh, he said, Phil, you're so massive. He's the one who told me. He said, you're massive on you on um, uh, TikTok. I'm like, I don't have an account. <laughs> and we're trying to figure out why it is that people seem to love me. Because I can be, because I can come across as, poker brat, you played that hand against me? What the? F-? I come across that way, and the world hated me at first. Um, because all they saw was me lecturing other people, 
you know, and and to their to their now being right? an asshole. When you lecture somebody, do you believe you're right? Yeah, of course. Okay, but right. it doesn't matter. I shouldn't do it. I mean, that's me. That's me being out that's of control. That's a natural reaction. That's a natural that's reaction. A natural reaction. You lost the fucking pod. Fuck you. It's like getting hit in the face. You fucking react. Which I'm never, you know, mad about. The internet stuff I want to talk to. I want to go back to all back in the internet days real quick. Because you had guys okay. like, remember River Loser? Remember all those guys that used to play poker stars? I do remember a lot of crazy names. A lot of crazy names, right? And you never yeah. knew who the fucking names were behind. Yep, they were yep, always yep. fucking there and whatnot. Um, were you somebody when you were playing on UB and Ultimate Bet and all those days? Because, by the way, the greatest tournaments ever, the Sunday Millions on P-Stars. Yeah. The fucking, like, that was when poker was amazing. And then, obviously, yeah. the regulations came in and shut that down. But if we could get back to a point... Where we could have... You know no, why it got shut down? I think that this is what my guess is, and I think I'm right, is because all the money was probably apparently going to Gibraltar and Costa Rica and wasn't being regulated by the U.S. government. And I'm assuming that they probably stepped in and the big boys came in and fucking shut nope. it down. Nope. Okay. It's politics. That's politics. What I described. So it. someone... Okay, but this is... this is Some guy decided he wanted to run for president. And then somebody else said, oh, hey... Um, I'll support your campaign if you run for president. I'll give you whatever, $100,000. But can you outlaw online poker? It's a fucking true story. It's unbelievable. Nobody knows. Right. And so this one guy, he has the let's get rid of poker bill added on to the Port Security Act. Right? right? Interesting act to put yourself in. <laughs> you got the Port Security Act, which is going through 100 to nothing or whatever it is. Right. right. And they add this little rider to outlaw online poker. And Where does that benefit the guy go? doesn't even end up running for president. I don't even remember his name, but this one guy had one rider added onto one bill and it destroyed a lot of people's lives. Now, to the people out there, to some of the far whatever, far whatever you want to say, left or right. Oh, poker is the devil. It's gambling, blah, blah, blah. A lot of bullshit like that. Yeah. It also destroyed a lot of people that were, you know, making a living playing poker, having fun with the game. It was fun Say, to be no, able to play. But nothing, you can be your that. house. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. That's play a hundred dollar buying that's tournament. Swing left. That's swinging left. That's like the pussy way to look at it. Like, dude, I you fucking so. want to fucking play. You fucking either, you fucking buy in too much. You fucking lose too much. That's on you, brother. That ain't fucking, we ain't made And by the no way, and so shit. this, what pissed me off is everybody in the United States could have gone to a casino anyway. So what, what's thing. the difference? That's my question to you is when does that rate of play and the volume of play, like it was 10 years ago or whatever, 15, 20 years ago, when does that volume of play come back where we can do it digitally? And where does it happen? Okay, so Poker Stars are scheduled to be in five states soon. I love it. And so we're, we're at least gaining some traction there. Um, are you still affiliated with that? A lot sense? of a lot of people are rowing forward. I'm very close with Poker Stars, yeah. and um, and if I sign a deal with them, you will see a Poker You're Stars open. hat. You're open to work with anybody that, 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 that could bring in awareness. Not to anybody, but Stars is is a very interesting one, and I love their vibe, and they're one of the hottest brands in the poker world right now. So let's just say we're talking to Poker Stars. Who are you most afraid to play heads up, tournament mode? Nobody. Really. Nobody. I, I don't. I don't have any fear. Um, I will say this, um, there are people, it, it's, it's a weird thing. And you know, this it's called holding over somebody. So you just notice that one guy just always beats you right day after day, week after week. It's a weird thing. You, there's no mathematical explanation, right? Mm -hmm. And so it just so happened that the guy who beat me all the time was Phil Ivy. Great oh, player. Very great player. But when I, I mean, sure, certainly one of the greatest, um, yeah. if not the greatest, you know, and so, um, yeah, it would come 10, nine, seven in a televised game and I'd have pocket tens <laughs> and I'd wait for the safe card on the turn, the deuce. And we get it all in and somehow he had six, eight. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm in a tournament. We're down to seven handed. It's a world poker tour tournament. I pick up ace king of hearts. I'm putting in big raises every hand. He moves in. He has aces when I have ace seven handed. And I'm just like, what in the fuck is going on here? Yeah. So I finally got him back. It took all the way until this year. Yeah. We were at a final table together, and uh, I had aces. We're at a World Series of Poker final table, and he moved in you with and King. You and I. Yeah. Okay. We he moved in with King Ten of Hearts, and I finally got him. And I said, "All right, the curse is broken, <laughs> you know." Here, but there are other people that I just love playing what, what against. Makes right. Ground, what makes the ground you so good? DeGrange is just a fantastic player. Yeah, yeah. He uh, last night, last night uh, in a tournament here in Vegas, um, I finished. Uh, well, it's interesting. Yesterday, we'll change that. Yesterday, I was at a final table. I saw you that. Yeah, you told me that. Finished fifth, and then Negreanu finished second, 
And then last night he finished ninth. I finished like 10th in a tournament. So we both go deep a lot together. Negreanu is certainly one of the greatest players uh, in the world. Um, and he's gotten good at a lot of games too. Do you believe Very talented guy. Do you believe that tournament mode setup, um, whether it be the main event or whatever it is, right? You're playing in it. There are obviously guys that maybe like to play the image of being the fucking man. They want to show up late. They want to come. They want to be the man. They want to show up late, right? <laughs> and I don't know if that's you or not. I have no fucking idea. I don't that's know. me, man. If that's you, then that's great. But do you believe, though, there is benefits to sitting earlier with fish that are sitting down with you? Absolutely. That you can pick off whatever earlier Listen, because the fish are obviously earlier in the game. I got very, I got famous in the poker world for showing up late. Showing up late, late, all the time late. And, and people thought it was like. How late? In, after how many blind levels? I would show up four or five blind levels oh, in. Oh, shit. I'd so lose thirty percent in- of my chips. Oh wow! In the old days, these days when you show up late, you start with the full stack. But that's not strategically smart. Come on, you know that you have the you have the you know yeah, that I, if you I, show I, up I, on time. Okay, hold on. You will have more of a. You strategic- said it's not strategically smart, but you will agree with me in twenty five seconds. Go ahead. My biggest weakness is I get super fatigued. Okay. And if I don't get enough sleep, I play poorly. Mm-hmm. And so I never came in to try to show up and be weird. I knew that it was my advantage to show up at noon, but I was always so tired. This the t- extra two hours of rest. Mm-hmm. And so that un- based on that, I have a choice, show up tired on time. And if you're tired on time, uh, you're, you're playing very deep and, and it's in, you don't uh, get a lot of chips anyway, but, but you can blow the tournament. So if I show up on time tired, I can blow the tournament. If things go well, I can't win that many chips. Physical tells are physical tells real or is it more betting patterns? Physical tells are 100% real, but this is, <laughs> this is bizarre to me. It's like there's a whole generation that doesn't understand that physical tells exist. What I, is happening? I know. I've never been. I could never. I know that because I think this is it. This is the thing. You guys probably pay closer attention to it. I think the average player that plays does not sit there and actually focus on body movements because they don't treat it as a sport. They don't treat it as a profession. So like the 1%, it's like anything else, like the 1% observes the tells and are good at it. And that's why you're here and telling me about that. That's right. And, and, and 1% might be right. I've been trying to figure out what percentage of the people are great at reading people in the world. It might be 1%. Um, or they take it seriously enough to care about it. Yeah, because but even, you can care about and try and read somebody, but how much are you going to pay attention? Come on, but how guy- many people have the ability to read people? What percentage of the population is great at reading people? I don't know. Very small percentage. Yes, I, I, I'm one of them, but I know that I wouldn't take the time because I don't care enough to you know, observe somebody's every movement. And that's why what I only strictly would go on is based on. It's not time. every movement, like three nights ago, I'm playing in a tournament and I'd been playing really, really tight, which is a great way to win. And all of a sudden I'm like, it's time to play poker. Meaning aggressive mode. Yeah. And the guy raises, I'm like, he has nothing. I just re-raised. What's uh, re-raised? 25 the, you, minutes later. Just, you can talk real quick with, the, with these things. What's the blind level at? Um, call it three and 6,000. Three and 6,000. What's your stack? I have a uh, hundred thousand. And where are you at position wise? Usually, usually to use your reading abilities, you want to be in the small blind, the big blind or the button. Cause you don't want to make a great. always the best. You want to act last. No, because not in this case, because if you, re- if I make a, a move on the button and somebody, one of these two hands actually picks something up, mm-hmm. <laughs> then I could get unlucky. You know what I mean? Right. So I might have a perfect read on that guy. And then somebody behind me wakes up with a hand they can't fold. Right. And now so yeah, okay. So let's. So I had eight deuce, um, <laughs> you know, and uh, somebody raised it. Um, <coughs> Nick Shulman, I was teasing him about. So it this. goes full. Let's go through the whole hand. How many? How many people are seated at the table? Seven handed. Seven handed. Okay. Opening. Somebody opened. I'm like, he has nothing. What did he open with? He opened for uh, twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Full. Someone else called. Right away. Well, after a second, I'm like, all right, he has nothing. Also, so he went open the twelve call. Call. Fold, 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 fold. On me, yeah. Now I'm in the whatever. And now it's my decision. And I'm like, he has nothing. I'm just going to make it 60,000 and they're both going to fold. 60,000. Okay. Say I was a small blind, that hand. So they all folded, right? Right. So I won the 6,000 in the big blind plus the 6,000 he had to Andy. That's 12. Hold on. Another 12 that he made it and another 12. So I picked up 36,000 in chips risk free. Well, well, because guess what happens? I mean, I assume when good tournament players play, they, they, they take advantage when people are in the bubble. Right, because people. The, talk that's about. A, that's exactly right. But this isn't even on the bubble. This is just like all right. And so sometimes, so I think I'm the best in the world at reading people. Negranu. But what if they fucking called? 
Don't be talking about this hero hand. What if they had called? What's your move? So ready? Right now, I fucking call you. Hold on. All right, 8-2. You're saying you, you cleaned up the pot. Yeah. That's not an interesting story. So wait a minute. Now, hold on. You raise the 60. I fucking cold call you. I'm first to act. He folds. It's me and you mono and mono. The flop is ace, king, 10. I check to you. What are you doing? There's I'm betting. now 140,000 the pot. I'm betting. How deep is your stack? Uh, by then, I only, let's see. What did I say I started with? 125. I made it 62 before the flop. Oh, so you're either. I only have 63 left. Oh, okay. So you don't but I'm going to take one. I'm not giving up yet because you could have nines or eights and fold or sevens. No, well, you have to fire at that point. You're not going to check. Now you're dead. I didn't know how deep your stack now was. Now I fire. Yeah, I didn't know how deep your stack was. Okay. Yeah, if you're wrong. So so what? that's why it might not be interesting, but I did it six times over the next four hours with ten four, with, with unplayable hands. Do you feel like and more- I want hold on and I won all six. But think about this. Each time I do that, I'm building bricks, building bricks, building bricks to a house. And if you do it six times, you've won enough chips where you know you can get unlucky in a hand and still survive. And so how do the best poker players in the world hold on? Right. How do the best poker players in the world win? You I have to know I want to know C two ha- if C two folded, are you making the same move? So if it yeah. went opening to the same thing, yeah, full, full, because full, full. I don't know. Yeah, I am. Okay, but but that's just the read, right? And then yesterday I went in, and I folded fifteen hands in a row last night, and then someone raised, and it just it's like oh my god, he is nothing. I mean, it just I was in the small blind. He raised. The next guy called on my right, um, who you know, who's an amateur who announced he's a big fan of mine, a big fan of my friends all in podcast and went to the summit all in podcast summit. And so, and I'm like, all right, that's it. What's that? Anyway, that it's it's the all in podcast has a summit. Okay. Fully tilted should do a summit. Just I'll have all your fans come. Oh, we just rolled, bro. We just like, if I'm on a bender, if I'm just like chilling, like I just kind of shoot this pod, like just spur of the moment. So like I, there's four girls in here, you know, obviously I I know Caroline. I know my friend, I flew in from Scottsdale. There's a couple other people. Like Am me. I allowed to say the? Can I say whether the women were beautiful or not? Or do you get do you get do you get erased for shit like that? We uh we are pretty. You might you might we, get you erased know, for you know, shit you know, like no, that. You know what's amazing? You know what's Let's amazing? just say this. No, Let's just this. say this. Um, okay. Be get in here for a minute. <laughs> I'll tell you this though. I will say this. The the with me, I'm very 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 respectful of women. I you know you got to be. That's it. Of course. You no, be. my wife's That's a doctor. Most... I was kind of joking what? about that. Yeah, my wife's a doctor. Wow, you hit a fucking jackpot. I did, I did, I did. She's, I married her. She was in medical school. And she's like, you know, you're amazing. Uh, we had a couple of kids. Uh, our children are now 33 and 30. Wow. And, uh, you look but, good, by the but way. But I'm going to do my own career. And I'm like, got you. So, wow. Now, the good thing about that is if I travel for a week or two. Oh, I could pop in, yeah. I could travel for Brandon, two weeks. by the way. So I want to introduce you, Phil. I wanted to obviously, you know, what I like to do is sometimes like test people, you know, like I'm obviously not as good as you at what you do, but, you know, obviously this is one of my financial backers that back us pretty heavily on any venture that we get Oh, into. I like that. This is, this is Brandon. This is Big B. Very tight with Dana White, UFC. Met him down at UFC with a bunch of the boys. And you see this thing on his wrist right now? It's called a Richard Milley. I've heard of it. Have you? Yeah. And I'm just going to ask Brandon if he is willing to put up the Richard Milley for me to play Phil Hellmuth in a best of seven series. 10, 20 blinds, $1,000 stack, best of seven. And Phil has to put up 200000 to that $300,000 for the watch. You're talking now. Would you play me? I mean, uh, I yeah, I, w- I would. In live stream it? You probably, yeah. You you do know you do know I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you that I just want to tell another you another bad that. decision for Metairie Camp another <laughs> bad decision for Metairie Camp yeah, I would play God damn but no so we uh, are you are you a UFC fan at all a, a little bit a little bit um, I've met some of the some of the legends like Chuck is on my uh, Chuck's on my speed dial yeah um, and so uh, I reach out to him once a year I don't want to bother him. But if, yeah. but if something, you know how it is, if something comes up that's fun, I'll be like, yo. How great were those fights last night? Yo, absolutely. Bro, Gaethje was fucking, that was, do you think about that, you watch that clip? UFC 300, by the way, with Dana. Great, great card. Everything was fucking perfect, but like. He claims it was the best card he's ever had. Yeah. He's lucky. He's like, he got bailed out. He got bailed out by that knockout. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a yeah, great card. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I'll give Dana White this. I'll say this. Dana and I are very close. Very close to Dana, fucking whatever. He's the greatest guy in the fucking world, right? But at the end of the day, what I'm saying is that like, uh. I will give him credit. There is no better fucking sport to go to live than UFC. Do you agree or disagree? 
Oh, 100 percent. Right. Yeah. I mean, I've been to all of them. You know, as many as I can, and absolutely. And last night was just epic. I mean, and how would you rate the women that I brought into this house in the, around my? my <laughs> That was pretty epic too. And this is a very like. You know, I will agree. I will agree. I'm just gonna say epic. Combined. Well, I'm, I, you know what? This is the thing, Phil. Is this like? I'll be honest with you. Because I, I talk about relationships sometimes. Like, I just got out of a relationship, and so Caroline have been great friends for a while. Logan, I've been known for a couple, few days. You know, we've been hooking up a little bit and all that. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this on a poker podcast, but I'm just saying, like, you know, sometimes I just like when I'm single mode, I like to go. How long were you? Uh, how long were you in a relationship? Two and a half years. Oh wow! So then it's yeah, and be it kind of got it got a little dirty, got a little mean. Kind of, kind of. I mean, I, I think two and a half years. Is just, like, what was your? You like, have to be devastated after that. That was right? my worst bad beat of all time in life. Really? So my worst bad beat was that moment when because there was other stuff involved, and I, I can't talk about it anymore because I fucking want to. It's, it's that that ship has sailed. Yeah, that ship has sailed. But at the end of the day, bad beat wise, you know, you I'm sure you know what was your worst bad beat ever. Ever, ever, ever. The one that really fucking sunk your soul and killed you and still kills you this fucking day and haunts you. Uh, man. I mean, I've had some... I, I've had some big financial shit that happened. We all have. And, uh, there's prob- There's a couple of hands that... Um, Shut up, Graham. I think, I think a hand, there is a hand I still yeah. think about because you're talking about a bad beat. Yeah. So I'm going to take that to bad beat at the poker table. Perfect. Oh, well, that's what I mean, yeah. And the World Championships, um, Carlos Mortensen won it in 2001. And uh, I had two nines and the amateur who I'd stayed away from, stayed away from Phil Gordon. Why did you stay I stayed away? away from him because like he just kept moving in every like he just decided I'm just going to raise every time Phil re- raises. And you're I waiting mean, like a little shark. So I just thought, OK, so I'm going to play less hands. So I finally had a two nines <clears throat> and uh, and I'm famous for two black nines. This was two red nines. And uh, I raced and he moved in and I just said, all right, here we go. I called it. And he had two sixes okay. and he hit a six and I ended up finishing yeah. fifth. But if he doesn't hit the six, I take the chip lead and you win. And I think I win, you win. another main event. Oh, yeah. that's a fucking brutal. Yeah, that one hurt. Yeah. I do think about that. Yeah, but you can't, you can't let that, you can't that ruffle it, ruffle your feathers. You know what I mean? Are you playing poker every night? No, not even close. No. What's your so? What's your schedule like? So let's say next, next uh, an active season of poker. What does it look like? Well, week by week, day by day, whatever it is. I mean, oh, let's just say. All right, so let's just start with the day. I wake up. Um, hope I sleep as long as I can. I wake up and and I usually I'm like, all right, what happened to the stock market? Because I have a lot of stocks. Really, and I can't help myself but look, and I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, okay. I do too. What do you got? Yeah. You know, yeah. I like this. That's, That's what, what I do every morning too. too. Yeah, every yeah. morning I get up and do that. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. You both you do that too every morning. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I don't, so I can't talk on this. Talk about that. I want to know what yeah, does that look that's like. That's the first thing I do. I get up and I turn the TV on and I see what the stock market's doing. Well, what stocks? Well, you know? I'm a lot of mutual funds and stocks, and also just I'm sure just like he is too. You know, it's you like watch it's like you take these you take these financial swings. You get used to yeah, watching yeah. watching what's happening in the world, right? Yeah. And then and then and then for me, I try to get a coffee and and go mm-hmm. real slow. Yeah. So I Stop press a button. Coffee. I press a button. So I mean, I, yeah. I you know, my, my wife used to make fun of me. It's seventeen dollars. I was I was a member of uh, of DoorDash since two thousand fourteen. Now I play high stakes poker with Stanley Tang, who founded DoorDash. Mm-hmm. And he, we looked back, and he came to my house a couple of times way back when. You're kicking yourself, being like, "Why the fuck didn't I get a piece of that thing?" Yeah, yeah. Because why wasn't I in the right conversation at the right time to fucking get involved in that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, exactly, yeah. exactly. And then, so I'll order my coffee. That'll arrive, and I'll slowly try to drink it and relax. And <laughs> usually, hey, I have a how business meeting back in the day. I could have gotten. I have a two o'clock meeting, maybe a three o'clock meeting, maybe a four o'clock meeting, and things have just been exciting, going crazy, fun. All these things in the last ten days, I decided to invest seven hundred and fifty thousand in three new companies, and so it's just been crazy. And it's just I feel like things are going wild. So I run eighty miles an hour. I like that. Yeah, I've been running ninety. I don't like ninety, so I like eighty. Yeah, and then after that, I try to relax with my wife. I do play a version of poker. I'll play Chinese poker <laughs> on this app. I'm gonna only show this app because this is pretty. You uh, do whatever you want, brother. There's no fucking. So there's this here, pineapple brother. app here that that I play on. Okay. You play against other players in there? I don't want to get Yeah, it. and so Mike the Mouth Mattis, I play like seven billionaires. <laughs> like the, fe- first, f- the federal agents come running in. Yeah. They're like, hey. That's the first hundred people on this app were all NBA players and celebrities. Yeah. Uh, let me tell you about this app. 2015 finals. Yeah. Okay. Um, 22 minutes before the game starts, 
okay. I'm in Vegas playing the World Series of Poker, and all of a sudden I get clicked at by <laughs> David Lee. To play And again. Andrew Bogut. And I'm like, what the fuck? You guys have a finals game. You, your game starts in 23 minutes. Clay Thompson clicks at me. Yeah. And I like all these Warriors players, I think four Warriors players clicked at me. And I'm, so I'm clicking back and I'm thinking, what the? And I'm looking up the NBA finals. Are, they're not on the court. Is somebody else playing their account? No. They're in the locker room. And, and they're, like, hey, they're like, hey, this is just a really good way for us to relax yeah. right before the game to take our mind off of it. Now, what, hold on. Yeah. Then another funny one. Go ahead. You remember Michael Phelps? Of course. Yeah. Where Chad Lacaw was like shadow boxing right next to us. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. You remember that? Yes. Okay. So Chad Lacaw, like, I don't know. I've got his name wrong. This guy's shadow boxing and Mike's on his phone. <laughs> He's playing Chinese poker on this app. I was playing poker at the national championship last week. That's why I'm saying it. I'm thinking it's a big fucking thing. Yeah. Why, when are they going to fucking find a way? Because I have two things. I want to talk about like what different companies, what makes you want to invest in things. I want to talk about that with you and you. But at the same time, I want to know this too. How the fuck can you fucking find a way to get back to the days of the Sunday Millions when there was 10,000 fucking people registered for a 265 fucking buy-in? And when are we going there? Man, I thought... Because it's been long overdue. I thought poker was going to do exactly that by 2015. I would have bet a lot of money. And I thought, oh, it's coming by 2017. And then I figured something out. Uh, there was one guy standing in the way, one person standing in the way of poker coming back. And it was just unbelievable that one person had that much power. But he's the biggest donor on the planet Earth. Left side, right side? Right side. Owns a... Um, um, we're good. We're good. We're good. We, don't, we don't get murdered in our sleep. Well, no, because <laughs> yeah. because he died. He died recently. Oh, you're good. Run it. Died dead. a couple of years ago. Yeah. Well, I won't mention shooting. names. He's one guy dead. who was donating yeah. $100 million a year. And basically, he said, um, I will not support anybody that backs online poker because he thought it would be bad for his casino business. This is a true story. But now he's 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 out of the picture. Well, it's true. And so I poker and, slowly and, yeah, coming yeah, back. Exactly but the reason People why he was afraid, it's a Phil, game he, was of skill. Afraid, he was afraid of why it would affect his casino business because he's got a license there and realizes that the poker world is a little bit shady and was shady at the time. And all this money was being sent to mm -hmm. Gibraltar, Costa Rica, and all this shit. And the U.S. government finally fucking said, like, bro, we ain't getting a fucking piece of this thing. There's too much money. No, no, I told a... you what happened yeah. earlier with that. You know? and all of a sudden, somebody slipped a bill as a rider yeah. under the Port Security Act, and poker is just gone the next day. It's I know. Crazy. This is a way to bring it back, because yeah. it is good. MonkeyTilt.com is now available in select countries. We are matching up to $500 deposits. All right, so download the mobile app on Google Play and App Store. Head to mtfantasy.com. That's why. Because yeah, it is good. I love having very successful people in the room. I mean, yeah. Homeboy is fucking extremely successful. You're very successful. What interests you in, because in, you play in the sandbox a little bit too. What makes you like want to invest in a company? <clears throat> well, I mean, it's just different. I mean, I've, uh, I'm, uh, I come back from a marine business, uh, offshore work boats, diving business, and things like that. And uh, we're actually, you know, everybody thinks I made the money in that. I really didn't. So the the BP oil spill hit. Yeah, uh, I made a millions off that, and then uh, wait, how? I had a bunch of property uh, in in Mississippi, and we just uh, provided a lot of boats and things like that. I mean, I had like thirty seven boats working for me. So you made a lot of money cleaning up the oil spill. That's yes. cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. There was no. Well, like, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and you're I doing work. something good for yeah. society and yeah. printing. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's like, yeah. Class yeah. Check, yeah. check. Yeah. Continue. Yeah. And I did it for like a year and a half, where they loved me, and I uh, just I took advantage of it, and we made a lot of money on that. But it, what's funny is, yeah. But what's the next step? The next step. So where I made my big he's money. He's fucked you, Rich. He's fucked you, Rich. He's good. Don't have you know, next already time. Had, already he's had good. money. He's living in a fucking but it, 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 somewhere in fucking so, wherever it is. So uh, a buddy of mine You've from Nashville, Rich Roberts, uh, we, uh, he called me up one day and uh, said, look, I got a little business in, uh, in Nashville that's, I got a buddy of mine that's doing diabetes testing. He's got a, a huge company that uh, he, he's so busy with that. He, he's he got a CPAP company on the side. Oh, CPAP boy. with a the mask and all I'm, that stuff. I've, I've used CPAP every night for 17 years. No way. Yeah, really. I have yeah. not missed a night. I can't miss a night. If I miss a night, I can't sleep. No, you can't. Really? Yeah. It's brutal. Oh, so, CPAP. You know, there's surgeries yeah. for it, but... The but, oxygen uh, machine. I got one. I, I just got, couldn't I every it. night. I couldn't get comfortable enough to you got phase. No, no, no. All right, you got it because you got tested and you wake up 40 times a minute. They told yeah. me. No. 40 times an hour. Nope. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut you off there. Wrong. Okay. I got it because I was just like, yo... 
My buddy's like, bro, when you wake up in this thing, it feels good. And I was like, give me a CPAP. So I got yeah. one for my buddy and he brought it, it to me. It was life changing. But I also was also explained about the benefits of it and whatnot. So that's what I'm saying. It's like, I just put it on my face because I. Well, let me come back to you on that. Go it ahead. takes 30 days. It was so painful the I first 30 days. You, you got to get, get, you gotta get, you used gotta to, get to the 30th or yeah. 40th day. Yeah. Yeah. You got to be sleeping and, like Bane for like fucking. Oh, yeah. it's really brutal. It's so hard. I mean, it's so hard to get used to. Your wife's going to look at you and she's going to fuck Bane? Like she's not going to want to fuck Bane. Whatever. I don't care about the looks. Nobody sees me with the machine. Who cares? My wife. No, you're exactly right. She's not going anywhere, I don't think. Yeah. And she's she's demanded me to grow up five times to spend a lot yeah. of time in therapy. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I fought cut, for her. I, I actually want to cut to that. That's a great topic because so. like, obviously, like you know, I'm big about relationships. I've been over here. Oh, spoken about relationships. I'm a big like. Wait, hold on one sec. <laughs> you started, so you got involved with the CPAP business. Yeah. So me and my buddy Rich Roberts from Nashville. Yeah. Um, so talking about missionary sex. Yeah. So like back to we business. did that. So long story <laughs> short, we a buddy of ours was doing a bunch of diabetes testing. He was yeah. rocking with that. He said he's got a little CPAP company on the side. Yeah. He's got seven thousand patients. Long story short, we bought it for seven million bucks. Nice. Uh, kept it for six years and sold it for one hundred twenty-three million. Of course, because so because we had one hundred fifty-five thousand patients. After smart, we, we sold smart, the company. Smart. Now and, that's uh, a good story. Now, Bob, yeah. what the fuck do you want to yeah. say? I was just curious about obviously keeping the activity alive in the bedroom after being yeah. married for so long. Yeah. That's, what I'm that's just one thing that I do. <laughs> no, because you and I've gotten a lot of other stuff. You've got a lot of since stuff. Going the end, on. Yeah, so. No, but I'm saying, like, you know, because me, like, at the end of the day, what I like to do is I had this really smoke show ass girlfriend, like, smoke show before. And I, yeah, I know. My, my, I Rolodex, know. my Rolodex, my Rolodex, I, 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 I have game. I know her. I don't want to talk to a lot, but I have game. You know that. I like can't say her name. Crazy ass game. Like, I yeah. talked to her a little while ago. She still likes me though. I know that. Well, listen, I fucking I'm, listen. It's a, we, I'll talk to you later. Anyways, what I'm saying is, you have been married for you're you're a married man. And yeah, I absolutely. Love about you very faithful man, which I respect, which is very important. Very faithful man. I'm very famous for being faithful. In fact, people make fun of me because I always say I've never cheated on my wife. I've it's never cheated on my wife. Thirty three years. I tell people, and so the now I've they married make fun for 25. of me. Now they make fun of me, and I'm like. Make Fuck you. You want to make fun of that? No. You want to make fun of that? Find yeah. something else to make fun of. But I don't yeah. judge anybody else. I, do. I don't judge the poker world. I don't. I do. If you cheat on... If, here's the deal. If you're cheating on somebody or whatever, I judge you in a whole. I think if you're going to move on your closest partner, I think you're going to move on me in other areas. So I'm out. Try it. And not a lot of people are really trying yeah. to do business with me right now. So I would just say that it's... I think it's... <laughs> <laughs> I would say that it's kind of... Uh, it's listen. I've never, I've never done it, and I'm proud of that. That's but I fucking don't, awesome. But I don't hold anybody else. I just don't. Now, now, now let me. tell Okay, let's let's talk some real shit here. I'm okay. You well, ready? Here we are. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So, so um, some people I don't judge for that because I know the state of their relationships and tatters, and maybe and and so. Thank you. I I don't judge them for what's happening. I, I'd rather see them do what I do and go into therapy and fight. You know, my wife and I... $20,000 of Beverly Hills fucking therapy I spent. So $40,000. Yeah. And you got this. better. Oh, no. It got worse. <laughs> she was blowing more dudes. I don't know what I did. It backfired on me. I got yeah. better. I got better because I understood my wife. It's a one safe space. I mean, people watching this at home, they say they go to their, uh, they go to their husband, wife, whoever, and they say, you do this. And the answer is always to snap back. Oh, no, you're worse at that than I am. No. When you're in therapy... And you say, hey, this has been a real, you do this, that person's forced to think. You don't, you can't snap back. They have to sit there and think about it. And then what, and they'll say, what do you mean? And I'll say, well, three weeks ago you did this, a month ago you did that. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You got me. Okay. Yeah. Then they start trying to figure out why they did that. And so then it leads to like this, like, a, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then there's the fucking weird one, man. The men are from Mars, men are from me. Is this my second point, Bob? Stay with me. No, I'm, I'm here. I have I'm, ADD. My, I'm going. I'm my going. second point is this. You, the very thing I do to please my wife that I think is going to please her the most is the thing that pisses her off the most. So you get, you unpack that in therapy. And I say, I did that for you. And she's like, what in the fuck made you think that, that I wanted that from you? And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so you're pro, you're pro therapy. Yeah, because then so I, I won't I do that again. And you know what it is? And then, and then you start to avoid traps and patterns yeah. emerge and you start to avoid them. Yeah. You know, and my wife's really, really sharp. And so we avoid those, those traps. And now we've been married 33 years. We've been together like 34 years. You guys ever do any like role play shit? Like, you know, when like she's the doctor, she comes in and she's like, well, Mr. Helm, you've, you've been 
Like the shit. You guys ever turn that on? Yeah, why not? You got to do that. Like that's the shit that makes you. Got to have some fun. We've been married thirty three years. Fun. You do all no, this. No, I get fucking freaky. <laughs> no, you do. I know you get no, fucking freaky. He's fucking uh, I'm a fucking the freak. Chandeliers and fucking. <laughs> oh, I'm fucking dead. Yeah. <laughs> hey, fifty two years old. I'm fucking still got it. Hey, brother. Caroline. Yeah. Logan. Mm. I need your opinion on something. You pop in for one minute, if you don't mind. I need your opinion on cheating. Get yeah. in here for one minute. No, Both. No, I want to know. Come here. Sit with me for one minute. Both of you. Both of you one on one. Caroline, are you allowed to? Yes. Okay. So listen, Caroline. Honestly, what is your opinion on? Is it more attractive? Society today, because I got to say this. Society today, I feel it's like a muscle you build. If you can have the uh, the ability to be able to say no to temptation, yeah. I think that should be an attractive quality because temptation is all around us. Phil Hellmuth can go out and go fucking blown by whoever he wants because he's Phil Hellmuth. So can you. So can I. But I feel whoa, 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 not you. Honey, I fucking, I don't know if you've seen mine. We're all good. But anyway, I'm saying, good like, one, good are, one. are women worse than men, Caroline? Yeah, I think so. Well, I don't know. You know what? It kind of depends. Uh, I think cheating goes both ways, right? What do you I know mean? a lot of girls who have cheated. I know a lot of guys who have cheated. Um, but I do find it really attractive when you can, like, turn down temptation. Even if I get turned down by someone, I'm like, damn, that was... Kind of hot. I want you even I've more. Never, I've never had sex with Caroline, by the way. I just want to say that. We never hooked up. Yeah, can we clear that up? Yeah, Everyone? Never, me and Caroline never hooked up. I will say that. <laughs> say it again. Say it Caroline say it and I have never hooked up because I've been very respectful. <laughs> I would hire Caroline, by the way, <laughs> to be the head of fucking any business that I would be a part of because Caroline is a power she's female. She's awesome. And she's amazing. Thank and that's why everybody like thinks like, my biggest thing is this, why I don't do business with people, whatever, like whatever, if they're disrespectful to women. Caroline, you got to admit, right? I'm pretty respectful, right? Yeah. I've never I, made I, a move. It's been fucking seven years. How many years? You've made one. Um, <laughs> you By the way, that was a move. I wasn't trying. But you're respectful, and you you always have been, and you're loyal, and you're good to your people. And yeah, I think sometimes you have a bad. That's all we need from you, Caroline. Please move along. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I love you. Love oh, beautiful. You wow, man. <laughs> That's great. I love it. Okay. All right. <laughs> you should have hit it. <laughs> Anyway, back to poker. We're talking very <laughs> seriously. I actually played it. In, well, uh, I will tell you, it's an interesting, it's an interesting subject. You, once you become famous, uh, you know, and, and, and you're a guy, uh, you oh. know, and you're, it's, oh. it's, and, and then awesome. if I go to, it's crazy. It's, it's awesome, cra- bro. It's really crazy. And I, and I tell my wife, honey, you know, uh, I could have, uh, <laughs> I can't turn this, gr- down. this is a famous, <laughs> this is a famous supermodel. Right. And, and, probably was only a little bit interested in me, but then we start talking and she, oh, charisma, personality. We know he's rich and famous. And all of a sudden, you know, you're staring at each other in the eyes. And then I leave, because I just know I have to, I gotta go to the bathroom, limo, boom, back to the room. And I call my wife the next day, and I'm, honey, honey, I could have, I could have, I could have. And she used to get mad at me for that. And I'm like, honey. Now it's 33 years, she's like, yeah, okay, buddy. Okay. No, no, she used to get mad at me because 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 I, I wanted her to be proud of the fact I didn't pull the trigger. I wanted to say, I, what I'm really trying to scream at her is, is I, fucking- I am attractive. Women want me. And of course, I want that message delivered to her. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so she she can laugh at my ass and but say, that means "All right, really, buddy." Really in love, which is amazing. If you're really in love, which you, I'm are, really in love, and so and so. Thing. You don't have to be a pussy. Like, so we have don't... a deal. We have a deal. Oh, if if here. close situation, like if close things comes up, or 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 I see, I'm in spots where that happens. I'll call her, and I'll say, "I'm not trying," but she'll ask me. She's, "Are you trying to say this because you're mad at me and you're punishing me?" Because that's a legitimate question. I've right? had sex with twenty like, girls in the last thirty days. Congratulations. I've had sex with one woman in 35 years. You need some love. But I was also loyal for two and a half years. But you I was. 20 different yeah, girls was, in 30 yeah. days. Is that crazy? No. But, is that too much? No, it's not. Because definitely not. You know what? Actually, I want to talk to you guys. You guys are two married men, and I consider yeah. this show like a therapy thing. Do you think it's okay for me to... I talked to Dr. Phil last week about this. Um, and I got ambushed for that episode, by the way. When we talked to Dr. Phil, they, t- they yeah. told me I was immature. They told me all these things. I'm like, I'm just real. I am who I am. Let me get my point. Two married men, very loyal, faithful men, amazing guys that were business and whatnot. After you go out of a heartbreak like I did, in a heartbreak meeting, like we were loyal, we were good people, kid thing involved, like dark, dark shit. Is it okay to go on a Scottsdale spree, a Las Vegas spree, an LA spree, and just fuck anything that moves until it gets out of your system? Yes or no? That's absolutely what I would do. And <laughs> it's like I would sign up for Beverly Hills medical fucking therapy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, as long as I'm single, 
As long no, as it, it's a done deal. I'm putting you as in my it, shoes, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's a no, done I'm deal. putting you in my shoes. Pretend. I, I don't blame you. That's Heart exactly what I would fucking do. She fucking and, and, awful. And, and my wife knows that right now. So I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Kim well, knows that right now. It, I, it, so it, I told it, my if wife. Something happens, I said, honey. I'm done. I'm, that's what I'm doing. Okay. Right. Yeah. So I told my wife, I said, honey, um, you know, there's a lot of women out there. I've been interested for a long time. If if we ever divorced, I would probably head to them. And then she laughs at me. And she said, oh, no, you're you're. You're too weird. You're you're like a weird <laughs> stick it guy. You'd you'd probably find one really good one. Don't let her get one. you like that. <laughs> you'd probably find one really good one. And I'm like, whatever, honey. That's the game yeah, they try and play. Don't let them fucking get yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's what that's what my girl said <laughs> to me, and I went on a fucking tear of super bottles and fucking whatever I wanted to do. Uh, yeah. That was it. Because I did play the cloud card. I do play the cloud card now. Like I just get right to the point. You know, when I go up to somebody, I'm always just like, I'm not gonna waste time. I'm gonna try and pretend I'm not somebody else. I'm like, here, this is what I do. Here you are. And then obviously it's like boom, their eyes light up and it's like all right, I'll fuck you. Yeah. Ooh, From what I've seen, though, you did pretty good. Brother, I'm on a streak <laughs> of all streaks. <laughs> like, literally. But I, I do want to come out of it. Because, like, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you, you just got to flush it. And at the you end of the day, you go back to girl. what yeah. your mother raised yeah. you as, your family raised you as, is being a stand up individual. And But none of these. Uh, never... Listen, listen, you know, that's interesting. Dan Blazarian, you know, Blitz, right? Yeah. <laughs> did very well. He's been on the show, maybe? Dan has been on the show. So, Blazarian, famous for being with. You know, no. all kinds of beautiful, amazing women. Yeah, I've been and he Dan just, but he just came out times. like, just came out three weeks ago. He came he out of the closet, Dan Bilzerian. No. Oh. <laughs> he came <laughs> out and he it's said, like, "That's definitely the clip, mate, right like, there." Yeah. He came out and he said, uh, "I'm really happy being with just one woman." Yeah. And yeah. May, hold on, and maybe Always I made, and he said, and maybe I made a, made made a mistake in the past. And he said, I think the one woman thing is the way to go, which is very interesting because he is probably the most famous playboy in the world. Why, though? And I'll tell you why, Phil, why it makes sense and why I have always chosen one that might not have been a bad whatever. Same thing as whatever it is. Dan, by the way, is the greatest. Dan is the most amazing fucking dude in the world. Dan, yeah. like, literally counseled me through shit when I was like, he's yeah. like, what are you fucking worried about this dumbass bitch for? Like, texting me and all that stuff. And yeah. he's like, he was like, hit me there for and, him. And he had this watch right here. Yeah. Stolen at the UFC fight one night. I didn't exact do same, I had nothing same, to do with same that. Same watch. I had yeah. nothing to do with that. Yeah. I didn't. Just let you down. I told the guy to give it back. I yeah. I was kidding. And maybe this is this one. <laughs> the, Rob Danny. Now, Dan's no, one of the best not. guys in the fucking world. Yeah, me and him talked about that, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Dan's a great guy. But I, You tell us. You tell, tell us what you're going to say. I, I had an important point, but like I think that I... I, I no, I, no, I'll get you back to it. You said... The re you were talking about, you said the reason why being with one, and then you got stuck. The reason, perfect, thank you, Phil, for, for paying attention and listening, and I love that because that means a lot to me. The reason why is because at our level, right, we're obviously, regardless of money, regardless of poker fame, regardless of we're dumb internet fame, whatever it is, we're more open to being a target to, you know, let me ask you what They're the, after, you know risk what? Risk reduction. Hey, I... I one girl. Hold on. I'm with let me, every, let me, every 30 me, days. If I'm with 25 girls. Give me one, one line. Dice. Give me one line, and I'll go right back to you. Go ahead. They're after the persona, not you. They're after my dick. I got a big ass dick. <laughs> that may or may not be true, but they're after the fortune, the fame, the persona. No, they are represent. after that too, obviously. But like you know, yeah. obviously I have a huge. <laughs> I don't know if that's obvious. <laughs> Is there yeah. proof? No, it's not. I mean, that's what. Like, I don't want to see the proof. No, no, you can no, say no, no, is no, there no, proof? It's your podcast. You can fucking say whatever the fuck you there want. Are people, fuck there are people. There are people. No, there are people. We dropped all pics. Yeah. Yeah. There are yeah. people with dick pics on the internet. No, no. Yeah, I too. honestly, though, I've, I, I just like, I, I will obviously, because I'm, I'm very proud of it, and not to be weird, I'm talking with two dudes, but I've been. Uh, yeah, this is kind of weird now. Huh? It's kind of weird. Oh, no. I mean, I, I don't think this is weird. No, no. I think you're talking about like this six. Man, man, he, he, he claims he has this thing. No, I think you that, and I are always calling, ask Caroline, You and I are calling bullshit. Hey, you know Caroline what? Caroline you know, and Logan, can you get in here for a minute? Honest may, question. Hey, maybe I'm just jealous. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, Logan, I need both your opinions right now. Please. Yeah. Get, get, I, I want both of yours oh, God. Okay? I want to know this. Do you I'm know? I'm going to do my makeup, by the way. And, I don't look like this one. Like, and you look beautiful. Thank I want to know this, both of you. Do you know when a guy walks in the room with you and shoots a little game at you? <clears throat> I'm going to say this in the most polite, respectful way possible. You know I am. Do you, can you go. gauge <laughs> his, his penis size? No. Never in my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have never. Have I looked at someone and been like, hmm. Okay. Yeah. No, I do. For you, sure. You know. You can read it. Yeah, like, and what gives away the signs of like when they you can tell they either have small dick energy or big dick energy and not being disrespectful or anything? 
That's just, I mean, damn, what they're wearing, <laughs> their feet, their personality. You have big dick energy. But oh, I don't here, know. no, his head. It's the way his head. Did you see it grow? I did. <laughs> that was crazy. We are, yeah, no, I'm just saying we're good. Yeah, no, girls talk about it all the time, though. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. what it is. So words got around around the street. Girls talk just as much as guys do, yeah. So girls, girls talk about what exactly? I want to hear more. Like, if. If you see someone attractive and they're like, "Oh, I hate talking about this," I like that. No, 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 no. You said, you said, you you, you said big dick energy. I like yeah. That. yeah. No, it's just like confidence. Yeah. Because I yeah. assume yeah. if you're a female, right, you obviously want a little big dick energy, a little, right? A little riz, you know, a little flirtiness. You have to have a mouthpiece on you. That's okay. huge. What's a mouthpiece mean? Like you can talk. Oh, that's easy. A mouthpiece, like. That's where we win all our battles. I like talking. <laughs> yeah. we, got, we, we actually have a fucking podcast show yeah. going on. Right These now, so. three guys can talk. Yeah, I love it. Well, we um, <laughs> so who's the new guy that you're seeing now? Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you beautiful little two best. You know? uh, that was great. <laughs> no, I'm going to get married soon. I'm going to get married soon. I'll have a kid. Probably five years now. How old are you? Be good. I'm 35. Yep. So, you know. I would have probably waited. I mean, I didn't wait. I, I knocked I my wife to, up. I, I, you know? I wanted that. You want me to be honest with you? I, I knocked my wife up when when she when I was twenty four. She was twenty four, and then, uh, but I, I knew she was the one. But I, I'm not confident she would have been with me. Right. I'm not. I'm not confident. I mean, listen. I mean, now, 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 I'm very proud of. Now, I'm very proud of how of my understanding of the world, my place in it, and I'm, and I can understand people at a very high level, at a very high EQ. Yeah. But back then, I was 24. I just won the main event. <laughs> I had my ego. Like I had my ego was out of control. I had no reason to think I was special in any way. Like my whole life, and all of a sudden, you win this stuff. So I think I was a bit of a. I was a bit of like a, a mess. <laughs> and then, you know, and so I had to knock her up to make sure I kept her, you know? No, oh, bro, sometimes, though, low key, that's a real yeah. thing. That's a real thing. Like, you yeah. find sometimes, I wasn't at that level. We talked about it, and then. I mean, I didn't really intentionally knock her up, but that's what happened. And what, it was what, the what, best thing that, best, it was a great, amazing thing for me. Um, because, and, and for her, but I think I was probably hard to be with the first five, six years. Mm. And, but then all the therapy, you get better, you get wiser, you get more mature. And then all of a sudden, I think. I think that I would be, I think that I would be really What do you think your therapist bill is by now lifetime? Uh, we haven't done as much therapy the last uh, eight years. Okay. But we just, but you know, during the pandemic, you're stuck together quite a bit. And uh, we, 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 we keep getting, we keep sorting stuff out. We that's keep great. getting better. Well, that's, a, that's called a real yeah. fucking relationship. Uh, missionary, is that the go-to move right now? Missionary? Very wife? boring. No. I know, but still, like, missionaries. Dude, I'm no. a fucking freak, dude. <laughs> I, know fucking, fucking, I know you are. fucking... I know you are. Yeah, you name it, it's but fucking... But don't you get, but don't you get, like, when you're with, like, and again, I, uh, very... I'm fucking 52, and we're, like, fucking, like, sex fiends. Gary Breck had fucking just... Oh, that's the other thing. Changed he, my life. He started working with Gary Breck. Yeah. You know who Gary Breck yeah. is? No. And I'll... Uh, oh, oh is, is Gary Breck the guy that, that, that's doing the health stuff? Yeah. yeah. Longevity no, stuff or the yeah, health stuff? It, yeah, all the... Uh, the health stuff, yeah. What is the health? Explain though, Gary. You, you he was better. on. He was on the. He was on what's his name podcast talking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, what is, do you do? You, do you believe in the Gary Breck mode? Oh, I mean, ten X is unbelievable. What what Gary come up with with all this the whole deal? Uh, well, give it. I can mean, you can you give it to us in like in like one paragraph? What he represents, Gary? Yes. Blood so, test. Send it okay. in. You're fucked. So uh, yeah, that's what I. Uh, I'll yeah. do it in a real real short uh, sentence. Uh, so me and uh, Dana White. Good friends of mine, uh, 10 years. That's right. I saw him on that, yeah. that podcast. So about a year and a half, me and uh, Dana was in a little bar called the Christmas Bar in New York. Hammered. <laughs> okay. And uh, I, n I noticed Dana started losing a lot of weight. I was like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? He lost like 20 pounds. I thought he, something happened to him. I thought he was like sick. I gave him a call on the phone. This is actually prior to New York. I was like, dude, you okay? He's like, I'm fucking fine. He says, I'll see you in New York in uh, two weeks. You need to meet somebody. It's fine. So we went, went out the bar and all that stuff. Eight o'clock the next morning after me and Dana and my wife and all that, we're all shit face drunk. That's what he's drinking. He's not drinking anymore, right? He, he don't drink he's anymore. No, no, done. he's done now. He this, is a, this is a, over a year and a half ago yeah. whenever all this happened. This was like in November year before mm -hmm. last. And, uh, Somebody's knocking on my door at my hotel room at fucking the Claritage in New York. <laughs> like, who the fuck is this? He says, hey, I'm Gary Brecka, and this is my son, Cole Brecka. I'm like, okay. I said, Dana sent us here. 
full blood work, eight o'clock in the morning. They did all the blood work. They got IVs in us and all this stuff. I feel like I'm in a fucking hospital and uh, did the gene test and all that stuff. Long story short, we did all that stuff there. Um, one month That's later, perfect. I was on the program. <clears throat> and thank God, uh, oh, every bit of this to Dana. Uh, he started Brecca, by the way. Right? He, he did. That's yeah, why Dana doesn't get enough credit. Like, yeah. Breck is killing it. I love to yeah. carry. But yeah. I have to say, yeah. I, I always give credit where credit yeah. I don't talk. Like, whatever. Yeah, I do. Without fucking, with, yeah. Breck would have been great, successful, whatever. Dana put him on a whole other fucking. There's no doubt. But I mean, I'm like all, an influencer with the I mean, drink. I owe everything right, to Dana because Dana's my buddy and uh, friends of me and my wife. And uh, So what happened? Uh, probably as soon as we got on the program in November, it just probably four months, four or five months into it, uh, I'm down 40 pounds. Wow. Wife's down forty pounds, thirty-five, forty pounds, something like that, and I've never, I've never missed a beat. What's know? the testosterone stuff? That's one thing I've ever interesting. And in. so they test your low, men that have low testosterone. Is it energy? Yeah, I mean, and my testosterone levels were definitely uh, they, they were low. And they can tell uh, that from blood. Yeah, yeah, the blood work, the gene tests, and all that stuff. They do all that. So there's peptides involved, involved uh, uh, vitamins and things like that. I do that once every two years. Yeah. Like, you, you get like I remember going to uh, the. Place I do blood work every three. Months. Every, every three months yeah. now, I do blood work oh, okay. now. So I'm too for, for the for the I'm first year, fucking, you I'm do it. Looking at it, I'll just die. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. young. You know, you're yeah, but young, but I fucking, I'm, wild. I went, I, I went to that spot that Oprah used to go to and they took 16 vials of blood. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. But, the, well, but we they knew everything. I mean, I don't take that much, but I mean, it, it is, it's like five, five of them that, uh, for the full blood panel and all that stuff, but they test everything. I mean, yeah. this 10 X program is just unbelievable. I'm, I'm lucky. I've I recommend it for everybody. This AFib shit's not um, fun, but I have almost yeah. perfect health. So. And I've put a ton of people on it, you know, mm. uh, through the 10 X stuff with Gary and introduced him to. So yeah, it's called I'm, 10x. Yeah, 10x. I mean, he, he, I, I, I've heard like you know like I, at the end of the day he's 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 charging a fuck ton now, right? Now that Dana put him on the map, he's fucking raking it in. Hey, I mean, Dana yeah. fucking made Brecca. That's it, and that's the end of the story. I never well, fucking heard of so. Brecca, but I love but, Brecca. I met him the other day. He's a yeah. fucking good dude. He's always very smart as a doctor. Yeah. But I'm telling you, business 150 thousand x when Dana. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I was with him. Like because now his prices and, go through the fucking. I, I was with him no, last I'll night. Say that. I don't give a fuck. You know, I mean, it it, it can be expensive. <laughs> like I said, there's a uh, equipment you can buy, that and of course I've got all the equipment, and that's that's where the money is. Yeah, you can do it without the equipment if you do the regiment. And Gary explains every bit of that on his podcast and all that stuff. Uh, there's a lot of natural stuff that you can do. Yeah, What's the, but what's like the, said, but it, it's all what you you know. If if, if you got the money, you can spend it. Well, what's the money? You know, how much are we talking? It's a good I mean, question. You know, whenever it, you know, you if you do the full like like me and Dana's. Done, I want the Rolls Royce. So yeah. I'm going into Gary Brecker's office. I'm a billionaire. Chinese Give us the Rolls Royce. Yeah, I want the Rolls Royce. It's going to cost you a hundred grand a, d- a just year? for the equipment. Yeah. No, 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 not a year. The red light therapy, the cold plunge, uh, oxygen therapy, and all that kind of stuff, and then the, so the, they the, like the cold plunge. Yeah. My wife's been doing. Well, let me tell you something. The, the, the like cold plunge and 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 I don't know, like hundred grand you know, like ice cubes in the bathtub. I don't know, Brecker. Well, you know, yeah. even in California, it, it, the pool gets real cold at night, yeah. so yeah. you can jump we can in jump that in thing. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll tell you that. Though, for me, look, let me tell you something. The cold plunge. You know, it's crazy for somebody to say that they're addicted to cold plunge, just like Dana says. I will go get in that motherfucker right now. If there was one over in that room, I would. There is. I, and there's two light in there. So, with the okay. Room. So the cold that's been hard for me. Is, is unfucking believable. So that's I do been hard it every for me, fucking but, day. But, but you're saying, was it hard or easy for you to start? No, no, it wasn't. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, Dana inspired me so much. Yeah, but was it hard to get in that pool? That's my question. You just getting a couple lunch? I, no, I got hammered for it. It was right at the very beginning. Yeah, because that's where I am. Yeah. I'm like, I don't want to get yeah. in a cold pool. No, you, yeah. have to, you have to like literally take a thing I, where you I have love, to like. I love the cold plunge, but like I said, back to that. Uh, it does do wonders though. Yeah. I fucking trust it, me. Like awesome. I'll speak right. on both sides. Like I'm lazy. I've seen the evidence. The, yeah, I've seen the like, science from one bro, of my it's guys. It's like you do feel like it, yeah. and it doesn't instantaneous. It, it is a build up. So if you do a couple days, like I'll do it. If I, if, I it don't phase me at all anymore. I just you do fucking, it every day. Oh, I, I every fucking. Well, of course, I'm out of town. But like I said, when I, I travel all over the world, so uh, it's worth it. I'll, I'll call them ahead of time. It's like, look, the hotel says I need ice in my in my Got bathtub. It. I mean, I was in St. Lucia just uh, a, a few months back, right. and I was like, I want at eight o'clock every morning. I want fucking five uh, five five gallon buckets full of ice <laughs> put in my tub at eight o'clock every morning, and the, the guys were in there doing it. You know, and I do that all over the place. White people Dana, problems, Dana, they call that. Yeah. White people problems. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah. <laughs> Dana does that too. But uh, <laughs> yeah. 
But, you know, at the end of the day... Um, go in for five yeah. seconds to start. Yeah. You just go in this. So you do. You go to your hotel. You're at the Aria. Yeah. Tonight, what you do is this. Before you go to bed, you know what you do, Phil? You take fucking... You go to... You get a pillow... Case. That's how the gangsters do it. We don't have yeah. the fucking butler service like he has. <laughs> we, fill, we, get a, we get a fucking pillowcase. <laughs> we go to the ice machine. We fill that shit up. <laughs> Gangster style, turn yeah. on the bathtub, and then we dump that fucking ice in there, and you just wait 10 minutes, and then you just My wife will it. be yeah. thrilled if I start doing look, this with Dude, you'll love it. Thrilled. It's fucking good. Five seconds to start. But if you don't do a uh, if you don't do a cold plunge, I mean, I take a cold, if if like tonight, I'll go back tonight. I'll do a cold shower. Just do a cold shower or no. whatever. Oh, it makes a huge difference. I know, I'm but it's you. the cold That's plunge thing. That's how addictive better, I, I am. But but at the end of the day, um, it's a good thing to be addicted Dana, to. Cold Dana plunge. inspired me on the, all some this people shit. Are addicted, yeah. Some people Maybe are addicted to cocaine. Come say some hello. people are addicted to heroin. Some people, are, and you, you're addicted to cold plunge. Oh, absolutely! Just like Dane is. Yeah, this is one of the sure. best uh, poker players yeah. in the world. Yeah. Wow, Number one in the world. How you doing, buddy, Brandon? Mm -hmm. This is Kelsey. I don't know who she is, but she's staying here. <laughs> and uh, I just met her yesterday, but she's a great girl. I love it. So you're good. good. They're, they're like we give up at this point. Yeah. So it is what it is. What's the next uh, I, that thing? I, I, what's what is a hat? By the way, what is karate combat? Ah, uh, yeah, the karate combat. Yeah, that's I'll fight right. anybody. You, okay. I'll that's, fight anybody you want. Okay. As a matter of fact, Phil, for coming on this fucking show, listen to me. You know what's funny? You know what? As a favor, because I'm a respectful man, for, for fucking coming on my show, I will fight anybody you want on Karate Combat. And I'll say that right to the camera. Okay. All right. I'm going to say this. Okay. So Karate Combat's, first of all, we had 10 million people watch our last fight, which is pretty cool. We're second in viewership behind UFC only. I don't know if you know that. It's pretty cool. What did you say? And UFC? the brand, you ask the fighters about it. You ask, they all love Karate Combat. The only difference is there's no wrestling. So I wasn't the hugest fan of the wrestling anyway. So it's all karate, which is kind of cool. You wear gloves? Now, yes, but they wear the small gloves. Mm -hmm. Very small gloves. Uh, so the question is, would you do a celebrity fight? I'll do like an influencer slash celebrity fight? Because I know you have a fighting background. Let me know. And, all right, so you do this for karate combat. And who would you do it with? Who would you choose? <laughs> uh oh, Kyle. No Kyle clues. who? The founder of the Nelk Boys, Kyle, yeah. the partner I just sued. I would do it because I love Kyle to death, and I love him to death, but we were obviously, we're now partners again. Yeah. But I just want to put him back in his place and let him know he can't fuck with the Godfather. All right, there's one challenge. <laughs> oh, Who's yeah. your next one? I mean, I talked to Bryce Hall yesterday. I mean, Bryce, obviously, what I had Bryce respect for. Fucking Bryce fucking kill did, Bryce just... Bryce bro, kill you, bro, dude. you don't even stand. Like, you don't get it. Where I Wait, Bryce, from. Is, Bryce is my buddy. How old is Bryce? I, I love Bryce. I, by Bryce way, is by my buddy. I, Bryce, is my, Bryce is my fucking boy. I know. But I'll still throw hands. Bryce is you know on what? my speed dial, you know too, what? by the way. I, I, I at, love at, that. I'll at, fight him tomorrow. At, I'll be, I, play, I, love I love Bryce. But at the end of the day, I will beat both of you motherfuckers at the same time. Yeah, because you on that breakfast shit, whatever it is. The fucking <laughs> cheating ass diet. Whatever the fuck it is. A hundred million. You know, like it is. We're all I mean, like, check, go, go do a close up on those guns, man. Uh, no. All right, Phil. So here's the deal. If you arrange on karate combat, if you, you, you know, I know you have a partners, you figure out your own thing. I don't want to get too deep into it. You figure out that. We'll come on karate combat. I'll fight anybody you want for free. I will tell you this. Uh, That'd be fun. Anybody you want. So I got involved with Karate Combat. One, one thing I told them would be fun is that um, right before their main event, I'll, uh, I'm going to come on. It sounds weird. Yeah. And I'll shoot 10 free throws live. And people can bet whatever they want. It'll You're making three. It'll be at all the betting sites. So boom. No, I, I'm going to make five. But, but it could be four, but it could be six. You can bet on all 10. Or you can bet on each free throw individually. And so we were talking about, I was talking about doing a show uh, on uh, on one of the big networks where every night at midnight I come on live Love for that. three weeks and I shoot 10 free throws. But, you, but you know, they're trying to get their app full where people can bet on it, right? So you have a I think casino deal? You have a casino deal yet? Uh, I, I, you have I, a gambling deal yet or no? Are you exclusive? Can you do whatever the fuck you want in the gambling space or no? Well, first of all, I'm with Ari. I understand that. Some yeah. stuff I get that. Goes, Are you yes. open to the gambling space? Digitally? I'm about to sign a big contract. All right, great. So, well, listen, you haven't signed it yet. A big so poker you want to talk contract. To us, you want to talk to us at Monkey Tilt? You can talk to us. That's Monkey it. tilt, you know, prize picks. We're 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 uh, we're we're coming in for blood against prize picks. That's what I'll say. I will take prize picks down. I, I bet. Yeah. So I'm an I'm an official advisor for prize picks. I love that. Well, we're coming for blood then, Phil. <laughs> I mean, that's great. You know, you and I. But you know, it turns out we're on but the we same can also, team. The, 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 both no, our deals turn, are not really done yet, so we can figure it out. You know. What I mean? No, my I mean, yeah. I signed an advisor deal with them in 2020. So I you are in. exclusive then in the category. So why waste my time and even say No, I'm not exclusive in that category. Oh, I'm talking to lovely. somebody else now. Okay, all right. Well, there we go. All right. We got a lot of categories. You, you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of categories. A lot of categories. Right, right you now. Wanna, you want to play heads up within a month for something? What do you want to play for? You'd have to tell me a number. I'm probably comfortable with almost every number. 
Can I play for your Richard Milley? Like, maybe, do you think I can beat him heads up? I don't know. Think so? I, honestly, I really do. I think I, I think I could beat him, but I think I want it in a computer setting. I want it not heads up. I want him, like, in a screen with a divider. And then I also <laughs> just want to. Are we talking about poker or are we talking about something else now? Poker, poker. Uh-huh. Only fans talk. I want wait, wait. I want to stream something, but I want fans. to play you heads up online. <laughs> By the way, if he this is a guy that was was multi tabling nine tables, yes. which means he's playing nine screens at once for yeah. years. Mm-hmm. So he has skills. I so I would play. never underestimate him. I could play. I would I, never I, underestimate. I played against I Isaac and all that. those guys. Yeah. The other but day. I am Phil Helmuth, which I am a huge dog here. So I'm pretty good at the, pretty good game. at the poker. Specifically, I played a bunch of heads up matches in 2020. There was nothing else going on. Remember that there was nothing to watch. No. So uh, so I played a heads up match against Antonio Esfandiari, the magician. Oh man, tell me about and that. And he came in and he started talking shit. Oh, I'm an 80 percent favorite. Blah 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 blah. Dust him the first match for a hundred thousand. Uh, I challenged her. Came back for the second match for two hundred thousand. Came in and I said, How big a favorite are you this time? Ooh. Oh, I'm 65% favorite. Dusted him. Came back for the third match, and I said, how big a favorite are you? Now we played for 400000 And he said, I'm 60% favorite. I just thought to myself, in poker history, when it comes to playing, like, there's a reason I have 14 world championships in Texas Hold'em. It's my game, man. It's that's my a, game. That's a, that's yeah. No one's even close to that. No one's even close to that. That's a tire. That, nobody's close to. And this is tournaments. He's playing me it's in the a best tournament. Player of the world. Really? So yeah, I beat the him the third the one. Yeah. Then they gave me a belt, and then I had to win three more for another belt, and then uh, and I, the last one I played for one point six million, I did lose. That one hurt. So I that think was I a heads finished up one game. I think I finished ten and two in the matches, but against the world's best players. If internet was alive today and back in full effect, what games would you be playing and why? You know, I, I think I'd be playing some of the mixed games. You know, I wouldn't be playing as much Hold'em. I'd be playing uh, these games like yeah. Omaha 8 or better, Potlam and Omaha. These games that, that half the audience knows exist. Yeah, you know, seven card stud, seven card stud high low, seven card stud low. Those all, the, games, all the sharks are now going to like PLO and fucking hammering guys there, right? The sharks, a lot of sharks are playing PLO. It's a very, but it's a very, we like to call it a high variance game. So you can play great and you can lose. You can play great, you can lose. You're playing no limit Texas Hold'em. You play great. You don't lose 10 times in a row. And the reasoning I think is because the math is, if it's right, I, 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 this is my guess. If Just you're playing PLO, luck. there's more cards, there's more things. So smarter yeah. guys win because there's more variables. Mm. You don't have to necessarily be smart. There's there's people in poker that you know, like that have third grade educations. Like Puggy Pearson was a Hall of Famer. Is Who a Hall the of fuck Famer. Is Puggy Pearson. Yeah, exactly. He died in 03. But but yeah. but he was you know. Um, you have people that just have card sense, world class card sense. It doesn't mean that they're super intelligent. Are you somebody who's super intelligent? You tell me. Hmm. I, I think my intelligence is pretty high. Um, um, my EQ, my EQ. Poetry. Listen, there's IQ and there's EQ. <laughs> e- EQ, my EQ is off the charts. My EQ is off the charts, so I can tell when people are bluffing. Oh, brother, you I will can not tell beat when... me ever in fucking. If we play best out of five, you will not beat me in a fucking best of five game. If we play serious man to man, I actually strap my fucking thing on. I take it out of mono and mono. Mono <laughs> fucking <laughs> mono, buddy. I'll tell you this. I'll play you for fucking. You better be all up, baby. <laughs> no, I'm telling you what. I will not fuck around, Phil. I will play I know you, you and I will set this game up. After this thing is done, I want to set you up. I want to play you in a game. And we could we could play for ten thousand. We could play for twenty. We could play on a. There's a club in Houston that I own that I'm going to go film at this weekend. We could play down. Yeah, in Houston. but I want something that'll make us both sweat. What makes you sweat? Well, I don't know. It's a good question. I know. I ask good questions. I do this for a living. Uh, man, I, I think it's interesting. My my sweating point is lower than a lot of guys because I'm conservative, right? So they used to make fun of me for not risking a lot of money, right? All the guys that made fun of me for not, they're all broke. Mm-hmm. And, and I've just gone like this, right? And so, so uh, I think I played a $100,000 buy-in tournament uh, where I risked my own money uh, two or three times last year. Mm-hmm. That felt a little like, a, a, to me, it felt a little sweaty, even though I'm worth this much. It's interesting. You talk about people's sweat points. You can have people that are worth five billion, like, a billion dollars that have a real trouble like playing poker for five thousand. Yeah, yeah five, I was with even a hundred. Chris from Rumble, they, they Chris from Rumble, fucking billionaire. Rumble, great company by the way, amazing. Love Rumble, fucking 
Hey, he had fucking five hundred dollars. I'm like, Chris, you're a billionaire. He's worried about five hundred dollars. He's, he's like, sweating. I don't know. It. He's like, look at his sweating. We're five hundred dollars. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you yeah, would yeah. look. You're worth a billion look, dollars. I feel it. I'm not no fucking billionaire, but I've, I've got a lot of money. But whenever like, I right. gamble too, well, if it's you're the same if you're thing. playing blackjack, how much per hand are you betting? Uh, hundred to five hundred. Right, and if you yeah. start betting two thousand a hand, even let's say yeah, you're I, worth I'll fifty get up million, to that. I'll get let's up say to you're that. worth fifty, hundred million, and you start betting like uh, three, four, five thousand a hand, you're like that's more. I than get you nervous. Want to bet. There's no doubt, and and yeah. I, and, I, and I've done it a million times. Uh, yep. But yeah, that's whatever. I've done it a million times. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, you know who <laughs> yeah. does it well is Michael Jordan. Yeah. Michael I, Jordan. I, I get fucking in. nervous. Yeah. Michael Jordan will walk in. I'd love to see Michael. Jordan I'll be doing books. it tonight. He'll walk into a country club wherever he's he is, and he'll say, "What makes you sweat?" You know, and someone of uh, two thousand a hole, and I'll say I'll play you for two thousand a hole, and that's what Michael does. But he doesn't high roll people, which I like. He doesn't come yeah, that's in and what I say love too. you play. Yeah. You play according to game. What's he worth? Four billion now. You can't big dick somebody. You try to be yeah. the man. It's like it's a, you know, everybody. It's situation. You don't high roll people. Like never. I would. I've yeah. never. I, I don't believe I've ever high rolled anybody in my life. I just think it's classless. Yeah. You know. Nice. Uh, so I got thirty dollars in my drawer. We'll play a best out of five. You know, yeah. like four hours. You know. That's why I would never. So how, long, how long have you been that, doing that's this? That's why I suggested as cheap as ten k. Yeah, yeah. We'll I would good. play you for five k. Yeah. I would play yeah. you for two k. No, I'd yeah. want to play you for at least. And that would be fun. Really. That actually be fun. And I, I would like to get because I don't know how to fuck. Oh no, no, he's already. If you back my game, I'll play. He's already said no. No, you have to back my game though. I'm not. You can keep. We we will. We will go down downstairs and we'll we'll do something. How long have you been doing this yet? How many years? I've been a professional poker player since uh, 1987. Oh, okay. So so, so a long time. Earlier than that. Excuse me. I've been a pro since 1985. Really? Yeah. It's been a while. I was uh, 20 years old when I started playing. I was like 21, 22 when I decided to become a professional. Yeah. My dad hated it. My dad has a PhD. He has a JD as an MBA. Dad, I'm going to become a professional poker player. What the? He was ready to kill me. Really? Disowned me. And I'm the oldest of five. So, and I'm a, you know, so all the pressure was on me to, to, to get degrees and he hated it. And, but he came to support me, uh, when I won the main event in 1989, I was 24. I said, I'm going to win the main event. It was equivalent to about 10 million. It was 755,000 and 89 is maybe five or 10 million now. Wow. And he came out to watch me and I won it. And this company, no one had ever heard of called ESPN was, was, uh, was, uh, but back then, ESPN was like wow. Chris oh, Berman and two yeah. others. Shit. <clears throat> so Ladies from- and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're going to want to stop this interview. You guys look. Cute. Look at this, huh? Stop the show. Check that stop out. The show. My bad. My, pop, 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 my bad. I'm sorry. There you are. Sorry. <laughs> hey, grab me one more tequila. Cram so, over into 10 more minutes. Go ahead. So since I was 89, right? So what happened after that? Have you just been a full-time Poker well, in '89, in '89, when I won the main event, I was already pretty conservative for for a 24 year old, and so I bought a penthouse condominium for for about 180 thousand, which was just this beautiful penthouse condom in Madison, Wisconsin, right on the lake, and I bought a a Cadillac, a brand new Cadillac, which is a super conservative car, uh, and so and then on then then with the remain and then I paid my taxes. And then with the remaining cash, I went very low on cash. And I think that's a very normal thing for people to do. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, but I was always great at poker. Then I'd make it back. But meanwhile, I was living in this fabulous place. Um, so Paid for uh, cash. Yeah, that's good. So you just went up from 89 all the way to now? You just... Yeah, I won, I, won, uh, I won three world championships in 1993. Yeah. And that kind of put me on the map as someone going for the all-time record. And I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to become the all time, you know, I'm, I had already decided in 1988 that I was going to become the greatest poker player of all time. It was already a written goal. You will become the greatest poker player of all time. The only way you can do it is by winning world championships. So I just started winning them. And, uh, so I've been kind of dialed into, that's been my life is winning world championships. Now the series back then it was 10 days. Yeah. Now it's two months. So now may, whatever, May 26th, I'll fly to Vegas and I won't leave. And if someone says, I'll give you $100,000 to fly to California, I'll say no. Yeah. Uh, you know, even though that's double my daily rate. If they say $200,000, I'll say no. Because I'm just focused on making history. Yeah. Becoming the greatest of all time. So I have 17 world championships. Who's next? Who's, who's got the most? Phil Ivey has oh. 10. Uh, what do you have? Eric Seidel and Johnny Chan. You have the um, most? Are right there. I have 17, yeah. So you're the most? You have 17 and they have 10? Yeah. 
Dude, see, I know how to get people in the room. Yeah. I know how to get the best in the room. Fuck it. You know? I, do I just kept winning. Yeah. You just kept Fucking winning. congratulations. Congratulations, Phil. Yeah, but, yeah. but there's miles. Awesome. Like, like Like this, this very famous poem. Yeah. I have miles to go before I sleep. And I think, you know, that's, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm good with the founders of companies. I always tell them, like, you know, I always tell these young founders, they need a cheerleader. They need a spark plug. Yeah. And that's something I didn't realize. What's my power? Why do, these, why do they keep coming to me and signing me up? Okay, fine, network. I can raise a lot of money for them. I know all the VCs, and I can see the strategies. But I think I'm a good kind of like... He's, he's undoubtedly, and I'll give you props here, and this is a compliment, he is undoubtedly the Tiger Woods in poker. So it sounds that, like that's it. That's yeah, the best for sure, way to yeah. describe it. You know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's like you look yeah. at it that way. It's like... Speaking of Tiger, I'm hosting his event May 30th right here at the Aria. No way. Yeah. And it'll be like the 10th year in a row I've hosted it. Really? Charity Poker Night. Yeah. Oh, well, Does he play? Cool. Uh, he's, he's gotten much better. 10 years ago, he wasn't very good. But Have you met Tiger? Yeah, I host his event, bro. We play well, blackjack. We listen, I'm trying to set up yeah. podcast clips here, all right? Have you met Tiger? No, just kidding. Uh, you met Tiger, though, before? You want, you want some of my funny stories? I want some Tiger stories. You want some, all right, you want my, my, here's my favorite Tiger story, but it's more yeah. about me, so I apologize. Go ahead. That's fine. It's your, it's your show, so you're good. So, uh, so it was 2021 and uh, 2022, and I wanted to give my 16th world championship bracelet to a guy named Sky Dayton. Sky Dayton started Boingo, Earthlink, all these companies, but he's just a, an amazing human being. And I have a list of who I'm giving my bracelets to, all family, and now it's now my friends. And so it was harder to travel then for whatever reason, and um, people weren't traveling quite as much. And I said, hey, I'm going to go and deliver this bracelet to you. So I brought my 16th World Championship bracelet, flew to L.A., and, um, and at the last minute they changed dinner reservations to Nobu and Malibu. We were going next door to the, to the place next door. So now it's Nobu, Malibu. And, uh, and I'm with, you know, one of my friends started this big rideshare company. We've got like, David Sachs was with us. Um, two guys, I'm not allowed to even say their names. That's fine. And, and so we sit down and the waves are crashing, you know, and we're just laughing. And it's the whole thing is meant to just be fun. Majestic. Yeah, yeah, it was really incredible, and and the energy's great, you know, and and um, and they start joking. They're like, because I drop the word billionaire too often. They're like, billionaire, billionaire, billionaire. They're, that's how their way of making fun of me. You know, every billionaire in this place, and I'm like, I probably do. And we're laughing back and forth, billionaire, billionaire. Everybody's laughing, joking, just great. And uh, and I think I was sitting with four billionaires, and um, and then I get tapped on the shoulder. It's Tiger Woods. What oh, the fuck? Shit. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh my God. So, you know, for this one, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> I jump up. Tiger, great to see you. And an idea flashes in my mind. Tiger has 16 majors. I just, 15 majors. I just won my 16th. And I host his event for him every year. And every year we battle back and forth on the mic. I'm going to fucking slay him. I didn't ask him about his health. I'm going to slay him. I said, Sky, give me the 16th bracelet. And I already have the script written in my mind. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to say, this is what it's like to have 16, bitch, to Tiger. That's what I'm going to (laughs) say. And he's going to love it because Tiger and MJ, they just want to be teased. Like, yeah, no, we don't want praise. It's an ego stroke. My next story is the, is, is, is the MJ story in Miami. I want all of it. I want all of it. But we okay, have, so we this no one, so I pull the bracelet out and I open it up and I'm about to say something. And Tiger says, Phil, that's your 16th world championship bracelet. I knew you could do it. I'm so proud of you. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah, you're like, fuck, I can't do anything about that. <laughs> I'm stuck. He's he cut me off, you yeah, know? That's a smart play by him. And yeah. I'm like, God damn it. I'm like, hey, thanks, Tiger. I really appreciate it. <laughs> My friends had been teasing me about billionaire, billionaire, billionaire. Tiger left, and I'm like, yeah. billionaire motherfuckers. Yeah. And they're all laughing. Yeah, that's fucking but great. All, so then I hosted his event two months later. He walks into the room, and he walks right up to me, and he hits me on the side, and he's like, you're going to tease me about 16 versus 15 all night. 
And I said, that's fucking right. <laughs> Let's go to our first interview. And it went over. We did an interview. It was his only play, though. Then right? we did an interview on my on my phone. And I'm like, okay, that's enough. That's awesome. And I got up and they Tiger's asked me cool. to speak. Oh, and I'm yeah. like, Tiger. And so just teasing him because, yeah. and that's what he loves. You know, we want to go back and forth, have some fun. Um, so I'll cut to the MJ story or you want that's that a one? Great, that's a great story, but it is a good play by Tiger, I will say, because when you are defeated. Great play. And you're there, you have to kind of like play the game and like being like the, the gentleman. Okay, all right. I'm you gonna, know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Go I'm to gonna, MJ. I'm gonna weave two more stories, and then I'm gonna, and then I'm, brother, and then I'm gonna no, stop. Brother, I will, I will shoot for ten hours. I don't give a fuck. I okay, like so here's the other fun one. I'm at the Formula One race. Okay, and we're in the whatever. I'm supposed to be in the pit because I'm supposed to sign a contract with a company. It didn't, didn't work out. So we're, we're still in this VIP section, and there's, and there's Phelpsy, and I'm like, oh, this is gonna be fucking fun. Mike's here. His wife is here. I went and. Spent a weekend, stayed at his house Love right Michael. before Michael, the Olympics. One of the greatest guys ever. Uh, in 2016, I went to his house because I wanted to go to Brazil to the Olympics, but I wanted to spend time with him before I went. Anyway, so so I'm like Mike. I said I'm gonna I'm gonna do an interview. I'm gonna interview you, but I just want you to know that you have 23 golds, and I'm gonna pass you. I'm gonna get to 24. <laughs> you and that to, gets you went to a different than Tiger. You went against the Tiger method. The, yeah, now that gets the hackles up with him, you know, and he's like turn the fucking video on, you know, or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, this is going to be great. Yeah. And this video, you can see it on my, you go back to like uh, Formula One, which is November. It's a great video. Where do we see that? You don't have social media, do you? Yeah. Do you uh, have all, everything? Phil underscore Helmuth is Twitter. Phil, yeah. Why the fuck aren't you buying Phil Helmuth? Who owns that? Uh, they offered it to me because I because the Twitter people early in the yeah, they, they grabbed it. it. I hate those fucking people. And that. I'm like, you know what? You're I just, a fucking loser. I'm just gonna stay with this. I yeah, don't. Care. You're a loser. Like people that have like fucking imagine somebody grabbing yeah. like BobBerry.com yeah. dot and be like, I'm so gonna I, hold it over your head. Fuck you. So Go I ahead. hold the camera up to Mike and I start and I'm like and he's like, this guy's talking shit. And I'm like, I'm like, uh, Mike, you have 23, you know, gold medals, but I'm gonna pass you. And he's like, and I turn the camera back to him and he's like, Phil, he looks right at the camera. This is so great. He's like, Phil, how many tournaments do you play per year that you can win a world championship? Oh, shit, I'm good. like 30 per year. He's like, I pl I race 30 races in my life. Yeah, he's got you. I right. have 23 gold medals. He's got you. And I'm like, yeah, got and you. I'm like, and he's, and I'm like, and I went back to me and I said, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> What can I say? He's got me. Yeah. He's got Tiger poker, beat me. Poker, he beat me. Poker is a sport, though. That's yeah. the thing. So I go, so then I, poker and, is and, a then, sport. I, and yep. then I recovered and I said, but I'm going to get to 24. I'm going to pass you. And so then, he, the and then I cut back to him and he starts singing, All so I Do Is Win. Is All I Do Is Win. You, you've been on a All long, I do I'm is not going to let Phil help me without the hook anymore. Fucking, this has been too long of a drought. When's the fucking next one coming? You're, what do you mean? I won one in July, the last World Championships. Oh, you did? Yeah. All right. When's the next one coming? Uh, well, I mean, I have a chance starting May 30th. May. How many games are there? How many, how, many, how many tournaments? Fuck, there's like 88, but the fields are huge now. Yeah. Uh, it's not the same since you. You want my last uh, You want my last story? It feels like I'm doing all the talking, all brother, the bragging. That's what you want, brother. You, that's what all right, you want. one more, one more. We so want then, that. That's what you would understand. This we, is I, the I MJ. I do for a living. I know what I'm doing. I'd be already leaving if I fucking thought it was This is good. the MJ story. Go. I like this one. So, uh, uh, so we're in Miami, and I'm hosting... A Rod's charity poker tournament. And the place is just, it's just filled with, you know, the, there's a there's a yacht there. It's just filled with the biggest celebrities in the world. They're all there. And um, it felt like to me, and this is like 08, 07, something like that. And so, and so after the event, A Rod's like, thank you, Phil. When I say host, I have the microphone all night. I make fun of all the celebrities. I'm making fun of Jay Z, you know, and Jay Z. And I told Jay earlier, I said, hey, I'm going to make fun of you tonight. An hour passes, and he, he comes up to me, and he says, when are you going to make fun of me? They Everybody likes a little attention. Low they want to be made fun yeah. of. So Phil's a low-key gangster, yeah. by the way. And yeah. I was singing to, I was singing to Jay-Z. I'm like, I'm in Boeing Jets. Global Express up the... Oh, shit, I'm a little bit off rhythm day. Yeah. Up the country with the boob bear still connects on the low on a yacht. Got a triple deck, <laughs> but I'm young. What the... <laughs> beep! Yeah. Do you expect? Grand open and Greg... But anyway, I'm, I'm out of practice. You didn't drop the end bomb around him, right? No drop the inbox. Just had just had fun. But anyway, so now afterwards we go to this club, and I'm sure you've heard of it. Mansion. Mansion's whatever it's called. MGM? It's called Mansion. Yeah, Mansion it's yeah. the, it was the hottest club in Miami for Miami, like 15 yeah, years. Miami. I'm like, hey, A Rod. That's old school. Yeah. So Alex, That's I'm going school, there. Yeah. He's like, I'll meet years you there. Nice yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Well, yeah That's we'll like in 2010, actually. That's yeah. old school, yeah, big yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we go over there. I open the door 
the, this, this, A-Red had me in a car and I get out of the car and, and the people, you know, a lot of my people are the people that work late at night, the bouncers from Poker After Dark. And they say, hey, Phil, great, they know me. It's great to see you MJs in the back. I'm like, okay, there's only one MJ. We're gonna walk you back to his booth right away. Boom, 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 all the way back to the booth. And now MJ's on my right. There's me, Holofield's in the booth, like all these big celebrities are there. And I text A-Rod, I'm with MJ now. And he's, A-Rod texts me back. <laughs> You've been replaced. A-Rod texts me back, he's like, God damn it. <coughs> MJ told me he was 99% to show up to this charity poker tournament of mine. Yeah. I guess the 1% hit. I said, whatever, we're here, come on over. Yeah. And uh, so now I'm sitting and, um, and MJ is... Uh, uh, you gotta be like, uncomfortable, right? So I say to him, what? You gotta be uncomfortable in that situation. When you roll up some brothers, and shit, and like I'm guessing there was gangster rap playing, or was it like a very like, oh no no I I first of all I love rap I and love rap second of all I'm super comfortable with MJ and and Tiger yeah. and the and but you, you got to go in there it's MJ and fucking the biggest people in the world are you not somebody who you know but you're MJ big. had told me three years before he's a huge fan of mine perfect then you're in yeah. so I'm in it's the same thing with Jay Z Jay Z told me he's a big fan of mine yeah so when they tell you that you're like okay you're yeah. yeah yeah you're just in. Because like now it's like, okay. But yeah, right. maybe I would have been uncomfortable if yeah. they don't know who I am. I'm just saying I wouldn't know how to react there. So I'm yeah. saying, I don't know how that shit works. So this MJ's dancing, I'm dancing, which is my line, only alpha males dance. Yeah. I've been using that line. And he's dancing, I'm dancing. And I look at him and I said, you're the greatest basket. He puts his hand up. And this is the interesting, this is the, thing, this is the whole point of the story is how I hate praise. He hates praise. We all hate praise. We do. We kind of crave praise until you get it. And then it makes you cocky and you fall out of your lane. Everybody falls out of their lane. Celebrities, actors, everybody falls out of their lane. Maybe an actor doesn't fall out of their lane because they're still great at acting in that moment. But athletes, Roadhouse, they become lazy. They lose their process. And so he instinctively, he doesn't want praise from me, who he really likes and respects. And... And so I said, oh, no, let me finish. <laughs> and he's like, okay, this is going to be good now. MJ. Was he smoking a cigar? He actually did have a cigar. Bro, MJ must have gotten so much. Like, you think about that. Those guys get pussy. Like, what? They gotta be, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so this is my last line. This will end it. And I look over at MJ and I say, uh, MJ, you're, you, you were and are the, you're the, you were the greatest basketball player in history. I said, but you have six world championships and I have nine and he just starts laughing. That's a high five. Wait, say that again one more time. Say what you just At said. At this point, no, I no, no, I want to know exactly what chance. you just said. MJ, said it again. I said, to, I said to MJ. I said, look at the camera. You said, I said, MJ, you are the greatest basketball player of all time, but you have six world championships. I have nine. End of the interview. Now We're he done. starts busting out We're laughing. Done. Now we get a high five. That's it. I love you. Done. That's it. Done. That was awesome. That's it. Done. All right, guys. Yo, this is Bob Mentor here with a quick message to remind everybody to gamble responsibly. Gambling will not make you rich. It does not guarantee you Lambos are pussy. 99% of you are going to lose. Fuck, maybe more. I didn't consult with the fucking statistic nerds before I made this video. Play for fun. Play a responsible amount. Don't gamble your mortgage. Don't tell your wife and kids no presents this year because I blew it all on fucking LeBron James to score over 25 points. It's not good, and it's not good for your marriage either. Don't be that fucking guy that to blow Dana White in a fucking public podcast for 30 minutes. And I'll tell you what, I've been there, and it's not fucking fun end of the day gamble for fun gamble responsibly and if you need help please go to any of our resources below for further assistance and i'm actually going to be hopping on that site right now so take care